Hello everybody. I'm Dr. Niharika. I'm currently a fellow in musculoskeletal imaging from India. Today I'm going to summarize a very popular on whole body MRI. This article was published in Clinical Radiology on April 29, 2021. Whole body MRI, a practical guide for imaging patients with malignant bone disease. So let's see why this topic is so popular and important in today's times. The purpose of this article was to show that a whole body MRI is important for the assessment of the extent of systemic malignant bone disease and response to treatment. It forms an important combination. It basically uses morphological and functional whole body imaging and forms a part of the national as well as international recommendations for imaging patients with myeloma or metastatic prostate cancer. And this uh, whole good quality whole body MRI data in today's time can be achieved in just 45 minutes, that too non-invasively. The current modalities which are used such as CT and radionuclide bone scintigraphy lack sensitivity. And that's where the role of whole body MRI comes in because this is highly accurate for assessing skeletal complications such as metastatic spinal cord compression and vertebral fat fractures. So it has superior soft tissue resolution. It is non-invasive and that's what makes it a superior modality compared to what is being used till now. So uh, we know that it is difficult to assess the treatment response as uh, if we use criteria such as, such as resist criteria, there is associated uh, soft tissue component is required to assess the metastasis, which is not always there. So it is important to use uh, this whole body MRI. And uh, there are various protocols now which we are going to see how to go about it. So the images are acquired in stations with usually five to seven stations and whole body table movement is required. A whole body receiver coil coverage is required. Images are usually acquired axially and later on compose series are constructed. Sagittal spine imaging is usually acquired using fast or turbo spin echo sequences which provide the high resolution images. So this will act as complementary morphological evaluation in along to our other sequences. So this is a table which summarizes the imaging protocols described in MyRADS and MetRADS. MyRADS uh, is basically the myeloma response assessment and diagnosis system, while MetRADS P is the metastasis reporting and data system for prostate cancer. Now these two are very commonly, uh, we are encountering it in our clinical practice, that is myeloma, prostate and breast metastasis are we are usually evaluating the, met uh, the metastasis as well as response to these particular tumors. So both these MyRADS and MetRADS, they have core protocol as well as comprehensive protocol. And the sequences used are first uh, the diffusion weighted imaging. So the diffusion weighted imaging is uh, basically we are using both low and high uh, B values in this. So two different B values are at least uh, used and five mm slices are acquired. Echo planar imaging is used. Good fat suppression is required for obtaining good quality DWI images. Next, coming to the T1 weighted Dixon imaging. So in this case, we are using um, uh, basically fat and water image reconstructions have to be done. Then comes the T2 weighted imaging. So in T2 weighted imaging, we have already, as already discussed here, uh, no fat suppression is used. And uh, sagittal uh, whole spine images and regional assessments uh, are usually optional. This is an example of a core MyRADS protocol in a patient with multifocal myeloma bone disease. Now we can see that if we, there is a, such a heavy burden and multifocal, multifocal multiple myeloma uh, burden of the disease, but still we can see that the uh, skeletal survey is negative as illustrated in the last picture that is K uh, image shows that uh, there is a negative despite the negative skeletal survey, we are seeing multifocal uh, distribution of the lesions and uh, which are uh, in D and E images, we can see that they are hyper intense on diffusion and in F image, we can see that they are showing hypo intensity or true restriction on the ADC image. While on the initial images such as ABC, we can see that there is a significant amount of cord compression. And this is very important to detect and it has to be timely and urgently informed to the referring clinician so that the patient can be managed accordingly. 
Next, we can see the importance of this diffusion weighted images. So, in case of these diffusion weighted images, uh, the, the image on the right side, that is, uh, it is showing the right sided acetabular lesion is hyper intense on the DWI image, while on the second ADC image, we can see that it is still hyper intense. So, this is not true, rest uh, true restriction. While uh, if we see the image on the left side, it is actually restricting, that is, it is hypo intense on the ADC image. That means it is an active focal lesion as compared to the previous acellular treated lesion. So that is very important. Another example of the diffusion and the Dixon imaging, uh, they run complementary to each other. So it is important to distinguish between the benign from the malignant fractures. Because the benign fractures, they will not show true restricted diffusion, while the malignant fracture will show true restricted diffusion. In this case, we can see the image uh, A. It is showing that there is a hyper intense signal related to a right sided rib. The image B shows that there is hyper intensity on the ADC map, signifying edema. And finally, the image C. This is the corresponding fat only Dixon MRI image, which demonstrates an underlying well marginated, likely benign fracture. So what is new? Uh, so this uh, there is a, a importance uh, has been stressed on the Dixon imaging, which is extremely helpful in patients who are having a background of diffuse marrow hypercellularity or rib lesions. Now, in such cases, when the marrow is very hypercellular, we can get what is called as a false negative diffusion weighted interpretation. In that case, the Dixon uh, imaging helps us to differentiate whether it is actually significant uh, focal lesions or not. These Dixon images are obtained using the 3D gradient echo sequences and they run complementary to the diffusion weighted imaging. What is new progress in the field is that artificial intelligence and machine learning has developed powerful processing tools throughout medical imaging fields, including algorithms for region delineation, image denoising, image reconstruction, tissue characterization, and artifact removal. And we know by looking at the protocol that there is, uh, this whole body weighted MRI imaging will be sensitive to certain background noise and uh, such artifacts related to the implants which will be placed in around the body. So that has to be uh, addressed. This is an example of a structured clinical reporting of a whole body MRI of a patient with myeloma. So we can see that the findings have been described. After that, a comment on the spine, the spinal canal, the marrow, the posterior eyelid crest, if any extramedullary disease or incidental findings are there. And finally, a clear, concise opinion has been mentioned at the bottom of the report, which can help to assess the patient and also to monitor the treatment response. So as to conclude, the whole body MRI is an important tool for delivering precision therapy for patients with myeloma at diagnosis and relapse and metastatic bone disease. Again, to stress that it is a non-invasive modality and thus it obviates the need of multiple biopsies. It is very helpful for patients who have undergone multiple lines of therapy. So in that case, it is very confusing if we use the other conventional modalities to differentiate whether there is a recurrence, whether there is an increase in the size, size of the burden of the lesions. And in all that, the diffusion weighted and the Dixon images, we have seen that help, they hold a complementary role. So uh, I hope this was useful and uh, thank you.